welcome to another beer review and if you don't already know it, we're in a different location today we're actually in Manchester because I'm up here doing a bit of work a bit of business whatever and uh, I thought well I'll try and look at uh, some of the local offerings and we'll have a little kind of mini uh, Manchester stroke Yorkshire series of beer reviews which worked out really well because the first one turned out to be beige <laughs> <laughs> so I totally, I totally failed in that one. What an arse. But anyway, this one, I've checked, this one definitely is Yorkshire. And we're doing a Rigwilda today, which is apparently the strong dark Yorkshire ale. So apparently it's from Black Sheep Brewery. And of course it's born and bred in Masham. Yorkshire and it's 5.7 percent uh, it's 500 mil now I bought these in Asda now they were doing a, a four for three so whichever the cheapest out of the four is is knocked off the price these were roughly about £5.96 so they're just under £1.50 a bottle and the cheapest one now remember the cheapest one that was actually taken off was £1.70 so it gives you an idea of the prices so the cheapest one £1.50 so all these are above well above £1.70 so on that basis, it's not a bad bargain because with the deal you're getting them for less than one pound fifty. So not so bad. So is there any spill in the back of this? Did I do that? Rig welder. Not exactly the best thing, but anyway, there's some stuff there. Right. Anyway, so it says the fabled rig welder is a ferocious and powerful dark ale with a true Yorkshire bite. A wolf in sheep's clothing. Oh, very good, considering it's from Black Sheep. Apparently, it's World's Beer Awards. It was a winner. United Kingdom winner, apparently. And apparently, it's complex flavours of chocolate, licorice, and coffee blend with the roasted malts, leaving a long lasting dry finish. Independently brewed in Marsham, sorry, Marsham, Yorkshire, using fresh Dales water and our iconic Yorkshire Square fermenters. So, there you go. And uh, yeah, so it's 5.7, 500 mil, and it's less than 1.50. So let's give it a go. Got the glass. Trying to find it. I actually thought I'll probably end up forgetting the bottle opener and then I'll be chipping the bottles off radiators and everything else. But looking at the room, there isn't any radiators, so God knows what I've been chipping the bloody things off, or maybe door handles or something. But anyway. Let's get this poured and see what it's like. Now these are kind of slightly chilled because obviously there's, there's no fridge in the room so I can't obviously really chill them as you would normally do. So they're chilled in cold water for a period of time. Which I think for a lot of these ales is probably better than just chilling them in the fridge. So there you go. Right. Ooh. There's a bit of a head in that bugger, isn't it? Of course, it has nothing to do with me, my pouring technique. It's the beer, of course, the spear in the glass. But yes, yeah, it was just a bit of disappointing that I uh, started off with a beer in the last review in this little kind of mini Manchester stroke Yorkshire beer review series. And uh, turns out the very first one is made in bloody Wolverhampton, seriously. Yeah. Sometimes you really, sometimes you, you look at yourself and you think, what an arse you are, you know what I mean? Even kid, you know, I just checked that before you started filming, but no, no, Wainwright, taken in by the name, what a cog. Anyway, let's see what this is like. Right, I'm getting chocolate. Getting ever so slight. It's, it's a kind of strange one. It's kind of liquor slate, it's kind of coffee. But the predominant one, I'm getting chocolate. And the other smell, the secondary smell, could be taken as coffee, could be taken as licorice. But the predominant aroma is chocolate. As you can see, it's nice and dark. It's not completely dark, but there is a kind of, there's a kind of really dark amber, really. There's no readiness to it. It's a kind of really dark, kind of, kind of ambery tones, so as you can see. So let's see what it tastes like. Mm. 
How would you rate this? Um, hmm. It's interesting, actually. Just to let you know, it's not a session beer. <laughs> I think you probably already knew that, but it's definitely not a session beer. What would I rate this? What would I give it? What's the flavours are there? Oh, right, let's break down the flavours first. Right, first straight off the bat, you're getting chocolate. You're getting chocolatey, and uh, right at the front of the mouth. Again, you're getting no real kind of sweetness there. You're getting that kind of uh, really dark chocolate kind of tone. So the chocolatey, and there was a slightly bittery, just slightly bittery. There's no real sweetness there. It's moving on to the mid tongue. And just as the kind of the chocolate kind of flavouring kind of starts to kind of dissipate, you start getting that. It's a bit like when you're eating dark chocolate, as you're kind of melting your mouth and you start to swallow. Initially, you're you're getting bitterness, you're getting chocolateness, and then of course you start to swallow. You're just getting ever so little hints of sweetness, ever so little hints, and that's what you're getting there. Just as it's dissipating in the mid tongue, you're just getting ever so slight. It just lightens up and just gives it. Maybe the sweetness is right there, but just as it lightens up, that's when you really start to notice it. But obviously, right at the front of the mouth, when you first taste it, you're not noticing that if it's there. But it is there as it starts to dissipate. Just as it, the chocolatiness and the, the bitterness starts to kind of lighten a bit and dissipate, that's when you start noticing ever so slight undertones of sweetness. Then, as it starts to go from the mid tongue, you are starting to get that little bit of kind of licorice coffee bitterness. But again, it's not too bad, it's quite light. But you still have that little underlying sweetness there. So the sweetness just remains as the, the chocolate flavour kind of dissipates. And as it moves on to the kind of aftertaste, the back of the mouth, that sweetness still remains and again you're starting to get that kind of licorice kind of coffiness depending on your palate you can it can be more discerning as licorice or more discerning as, as coffee i can actually get both um i can separate them both um so they're kind of both kind of there but again it's i would say it's probably more coffee than licorice but there's just that little underlying sweetness again it's still there and again, that just tempers the the bitterness of the kind of coffee flavours back and just, just kind of lightens them a bit so they're not so harsh and they're not so lingering as well. So that right now, it's a case that there's nothing in the aftertaste at all. There's nothing in the back of the mouth. It's totally clear. So yes, they might say a dry finish. Again, a lot of them say a dry finish. What they basically mean is a quick finish. It doesn't linger. So it's it basically... You get the aftertaste and then it just goes. It doesn't just still sit in the back of your throat. That you would probably get with more citrus based IPAs, more kind of like say American based IPAs where it just kind of lingers. You, you stop drinking, you haven't swallowed for a minute and it's just still it's just sitting there. Which sometimes can be a really overbearing. But no. Mm. It's a nice well brewed ale. And there's good flavour profiles, but they're balanced. That, this is the big thing. Um, for me, good beer, there's got to be a balance. There's got to be a yin and a yang. You can't have too much of one thing and not enough of the other. Because again, it just becomes one dimensional. Again, you can have lots of different flavours, but unless they work with each other and they're well kind of balanced, is what we call blended, and they're not trying to fight and jostle for position and dominant flavours then that's a good thing as well because you can't have flavours fighting each other again you don't want you don't want to turn your mouth into a war zone it's not a good idea so that's another thing that I like about it because you can put lots of flavours into beer but the flavours have got to work with each other and this does and that's what I like about a lot of traditional beers and a lot of traditional brewing compared to a lot of craft brewing because craft brewing is they want to try new flavours they want to experiment which is fine I can understand that I mean beer has to move on but there's so many of them they make it and they're undrinkable because the different flavour profiles 
they're either bloody awful or they're fighting each other and the, you know it's hard to get a, a grip on which is the dominant flavours and which aren't because they're all fighting for dominance and it just becomes really unpleasant and just undrinkable. So that's probably one of the reasons why I do like the more traditional because they've done their homework. They understand less is more in some cases and they really do obviously. It shows that there's a maturity to that type of brewing. I'm sure probably as years go by with the craft beer fraternity that maturity will obviously kind of build up as well and uh, they'll get there. But right now I think it's too early days and too, people, too many breweries are trying to kind of gain notoriety for sensational, you know, they're looking for sensationalism. Oh, we're brewing this type of beer, we're brewing that type of beer with this flavour profile and that flavour profile. And, and you're thinking, yeah, maybe once you start to kind of calm down a bit and get over the, the initial, oh, look at me, look at me, I'm important and start brewing more kind of finished, matured, balanced beers, that's when you'll really start getting the recognition, that's when you'll really start building a history around your brewing. This has got a history in spades, you just, you can taste it, Black Sheep Brewery, everybody knows it, but you, even if you didn't, if you were tasting this for the first time, you know that this is a well-brewed beer. You know it's coming from a company that knows what it's doing, it's a lovely beer. I could drink quite a few of these. It's not sessionable, but I'd be quite happy in a cold winter's night having two or three of these would be lovely. And uh, out of 10, what would I give this? I'm going to give this an 8. Because with the deal on the NASDA, that this type of beer, which is probably closer to £2 a bottle, it won't be that far away from £2 a bottle, and I can get it for under £1.50. I mean, I could probably get it even cheaper if I just bought four of them. If I bought four of these beers and I get the cheapest one, then it'd be even less than what I paid for the, the four beers. And I will obviously get some more um, tomorrow to try. But yes, I would give this... Yes, I'm going to give this an 8 out of 10. It's a well-brewed beer. It's a really nice beer. The flavour profiles are really nice, but not too harsh. They're just, there's a, just a really lovely... Kind of just, this underlying sweetness, it just, just basically, it reels all the other kind of flavours in and just keeps them to a constant level and it's just, it just, it's silky smooth to drink. Mm -hmm. So, I would recommend this, definitely. If you can get hold of Greg Welter, then do so. It's a damn good beer, 8 out of 10. Thanks for watching. Cheers and bye for now.